the Jets are two and three, and they decided to terminate, to fire, to relieve him of his duties, whichever word you want to use. Robert Sala is no longer the head coach. Does the firing of Robert Sala change anything, make anything better, fix anything for this New York Jets franchise? I think it adds a sense of urgency that I guess they weren't feeling. Like It had gotten stale with Robert Sala. I mean, when you look at his tenure here, They didn't play well. They were unprepared during game days. I think they were the most penalized team in, or maybe top three most penalized teams in football while he's been here. So it's an undisciplined team that um, at every turn seems to not be ready on game day. Um, I mean, we saw it in the Denver game. He could have gotten fired after that game. And then finding out that the Vikings game was almost a, a must win for him. Um. Yeah, I mean, he's a likable guy. He's a nice guy. Nothing against him, but um, you got to be able to coach. That's the that's the job. You're getting paid to run the team, and he couldn't get it done on the offensive side. Granted, you know, Hackett, it's not the best offensive coordinator, but um, I think they just assume that just putting Rodgers out there would be able to save his job and save everybody's job. But you got to have some, like, more creative plays if you're going to, you know, play in this day and age. And, I mean, he was kind of like the sacrificial lamb a little bit because, sure, this never happens. Woody usually waits until the end of the year if he's going to fire somebody. And that just shows how pressing it was for him to do it now because this is a win-now team. They're still in on Devontae, so that's not something that's going away. But, like, if we went on Monday night against the Bills, we're in first place. So that's why I was shocked that he got fired because I'm like, I mean, we're season's not over. <laughs> People might be panicking because of the way the offense has played over the last couple of weeks, but um, things can flip just like that. Like, sometimes you just hit a groove, and hopefully this is – what happens? Like, Ulbrich is not going to take any BS. Um, the way he runs the defense, I thought at some point he'd be up for head coaching jobs at some point. Um, and now he's got an audition, so you know he's going to coach his ass off trying to show that he deserves to be the next head coach here, even if they don't see it that way. But a motivated guy on a motivated team usually works out either way. So... Um, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, but uh, they need better production out of Rodgers. They need better production out of Brees Hall. And I think with some of the injuries that we've sustained on the offensive line, I think once we get healthy there, things will flip again. But hopefully the next move that they make is relieving that hack job of an offensive coordinator of his standing on the team he should be demoted he he should be up in the booth not not with the headset or anything just taking notes um so we'll see greg how much how much of the blame should this go on aaron Rodgers? that's the discussion that we're seeing going around they're saying aaron Rodgers. all reports saying that he didn't have a direct hand in it but we weren't born yesterday. We know Aaron Rodgers had a say in Salah getting fired. But how much of this is on A-Rod, why this offense has been struggling? All of it, 100%. It's, it's all his fault. Uh, that's, that's the way I look at it, simply, plainly put. Um, and, and it's not just because he's not playing well. It, it's primarily because you brought Hackett with you. You insisted that Hackett be your offensive coordinator. You've insisted to call the shots since coming to the Jets. You came to the Jets in large part because they hadn't won anything in God knows how long. So you figured you could just run the show and do whatever it is that you wanted to do. And now you're here not, and you're not playing up to par because you're, you are got sustained as a major injury and you're 40 plus years old now, or is it 40 on the nose, whatever it is. Um, so look, his relationship with Hackett is their primary problem. I don't. I believe that they don't even need Devonte uh, Devonte Adams. 
to make this thing work. They have enough talent offensively to be a good offense in the NFL, to be a, at least a middle of the pack offense in the NFL, but you don't motion receivers. You don't do anything from the 21st century on offense. You don't believe in any kind of principles. You don't RPO anything. There's nothing. There's no, there's no creativity at all offensively. The rock combination to stale is just quick outs uh, with a, with a, maybe like a screen design or maybe you're, you're going to uh, run a stick route or run. A, you know, it's a joke. You're running to the, running to the sticks. It's just back shoulder throws. You can, you can do, but it's all they do. They're very predictable. And so, um, look, I, I fully blame Aaron Rodgers for this. He's not who he was seven years ago. So the creativity in an offense would be much need, much appreciated at this point because they make him a better team because you can rely on scheme to scheme guys wide open. No one's open. No one's being schemed open in this offense. Every catch is a contested catch. You know, everything is a hard throw. And you're asking someone – who's 40 coming off of an Achilles injury to make those throws, make those tight window throws over and over and over again, and, to, and then to evade pass rushes on top of it, right? It's tough. It's tough. But he's not playing well. And so he's not going to get excuses. He was brought here to literally save the franchise and bring them to a championship, and they went all in on this uh, as well. But firing Salah is a joke, in my opinion. It is. It's, it's dysfunctional at best because even if Salah, you, you, okay, fine. I hear, I hear people saying that this team isn't prepared. They haven't been great. I think this team's problem has always been offense, right? And you hired a defensive coach. So if you want to blame anybody, don't blame Salah for that. Blame Woody Johnson. Blame that guy for bringing in the defensive head coach when your offense was your problem, when cultivating a, a, an environment where quarterbacks could get better was always your problem. And you know you're the problem because Sam Darnold went somewhere else and is killing now, right? And, uh, you know, so, like, I, it, it's clearly a Jets – it was a Jets thing. And so uh, I don't blame Salah. I truly don't. I have a hard time kind of jiving with that thought process or believing it or giving it any kind of, you know, credence. I, I really don't – I don't believe that. I'm sorry. Um, they're still in the race. Their defense is top notch. They still play. They still play well. DJ Reed is playing all pro football. Uh, he's playing phenomenal on the other side of things. And, um, and and so I just have a hard time with this idea that like, again, it's it's about Salah. And now you cleanse room with Salah, you're good. Aaron Rodgers is the problem. Aaron Rodgers is the decision maker. It's a lot of the things should fall on his feet. And the beautiful thing about all this is that now that uh, Salah's gone, when if this thing continues to go the way it's going. Right. And it might because your problem wasn't Salah, just being honest. Now, now you're going to see New York turn on Aaron Rodgers. That's what's going to happen. They're going to start turn on him because there's no one else to blame. There's no one else to really blame. You're not going to, Woody Johnson's going to own the team no matter what you say. You can huff and puff all you want. He's going to own the team. You're going to start blaming Aaron Rodgers. And that's the right guy to look at, by the way.